All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining me tonight. My name is Mahdi, and I work as a software engineer for Vaden. Many of you may heard about Vadin before, the UI framework for building uh, amazing application using Java only. Uh, this is a framework that we used to know, but today I'm more interested to talk about something new, the Vaden elements, a set of web components to port our amazing UI component into something new, to build modern web application using our web components. But talking about web components, how many of you have heard before about web components? Interesting. I would say 50%, so I will go quickly over a quick introduction about what is web component. Web components is an effort to port some of object-oriented concepts like interoperability and encapsulation into the web, the HTML code that you are writing, in a way to hide your code from the front-facing application. This standard is becoming viral. A lot of browsers starting to support it. Unfortunately, Internet Explorer does not and will not support it. But Microsoft promised that uh, their browser Edge will support it soon. Other browsers support it partially, but of course, Chrome supports it fully. They consist of four main concepts. Template, custom element, uh, or uh, custom element, HTML imports, and shadow DOM. Basically, the template is what you write to define how your component will look like. And then you insert local DOM in this element, which will be called later shadow DOM, and you name your element, you give it a name, this is what we call the custom component. When you want to insert your web component inside an HTML page, you need to use the HTML imports. To explain this a bit further, let's take a look at the simple tag video. It's a very known HTML5 tag. If you never heard about it, please go ahead, open Facebook, and open any video player on Chrome. The tag that, or the video that, you have, that in front of you is actually a video tag. This video tag, if you go to the browser inspector and take a look inside it, you'll figure out that it's not a simple HTML tag. It contains a set of inner tags inside it. So browsers have been supporting those shadow DOM elements since a lot of time, and it's now time to port this standard into your web application and make developers being able to create their own shadow DOM and uh, create your own custom markup tag. So this is all about web component, creating your own custom tag inside your web application. Google decided to take this even further. They came up with the idea of Polymer Project. <laughs> they came up with the idea of Polymer Project. So Polymer Project is a way to let all the browsers support web components using polyfills, but this is not everything. They also came up with a set of elements called Polymer Elements. You can find them on the, their website. They are basically a good infrastructure to start building a modern application. Possibly, most of you heard before about Paper Elements, or most probably all of you used them before when you hit a Google-related product. Those are actually a Polymer Element created with the Paper Elements. Those elements were created thinking about mobile-first strategy, how this is done. Basically, when they design and develop their elements, they think about touch or handheld devices first. And then, later on, when everything is tested, developed, and fully functional, they start to port it to desktop. And here comes to my mind the idea of how you can increase the user experience of your application while building an application using those set of elements. The rule of thumb. Imagine that your user go to a famous cafe like Starbucks Cafe, for example, and buy a cafe. And when he walks out of the cafe holding the cup in one hand, he decided to use your app from the other hand. The question is, will your user be able to use your app with only one thumb, or the cafe will drop on the, cafe, on the, on the ground? 
So put this strategy on your head, think about it when you are building your application to see how you can maximize the usability of your application and if really all your users will find your application handy and usable in all occasions. I'm going to put a more interest today about one of the elements which called the platinum element. But why? They are very interesting for me because they port one of the important functionalities that you can find in any mobile device, like Bluetooth, managing, messaging, push, and so on. And one more thing, the caching. Actually, if you use the Platinum SW cache element, you can have part or all of your web application cached in the browser, out of the box. It's as simple as that. You use the Platinum SW register and add auto register with only three lines of HTML code and all your web application is cached. But probably caching is not the only solution. You might want to have your application fully functional with having a database loaded in the browser. So if, you use, if your user lose signal or have a weak signal, you can boost the experience of your application by having an in-browser database. There are a lot of vendors that started to implement this strategy. Uh, they provide you with easy solution to use an in-browser database. One of them is Lovefield by Google. It's fully written in JavaScript that provide in your browser an HTML, uh, I'm sorry, a rich, a rational database in your browser. So taking a quick look at how, for example, in LoveField, I can uh, select an element from a table called item. Very simple code, few lines of JavaScript code, and I am done. It sounds easy, but there are few problems. The problem is this strategy for LoveField is one directional. You can have your data from the server saved in the browser. But what if the user modifies the data? How to sync it back? This is actually a problem in Love Field, and possibly they will not support it in any time soon. That's why there are other solutions that provide this out of the box, as I mentioned before, like Firebase. So Firebase is a commercial solution. You can host your database in their cloud and get things out of the box. One more interesting solution, which is PouchDB. It provides you with, it's an open source solution that provides you this service if, you, if and only if you have a server implementing the CouchDB protocol by Apache. So all you need is a database on the server, and PouchDB, whenever you are online, will continuously replicate your data back and forth from your client side to uh, server side. Once you're, you go offline and your application goes offline, you lose the connection, PouchDB will manage that your uh, application actually read and write inside your local browser. When you get your internet back, everything will be replicated back to the server, so this is one of the power of uh, PouchDB. If you're interested to read more about this and learn more about how to work offline with PouchDB, please hit on this link. It has a nice blog post about examples and details about this. But let's go back to Vaden elements and how we are implementing new Polymer-based elements be, uh, that support offline and works uh, on, on browser offline or online. Vaden elements are basically uh, based on L Polymer infrastructure. They support the material design concept. And we know a lot of big companies that started to use our elements right now, even though they are still in beta like the Vaden grid. The Vaden grid element is not just a table data uh, grid element, but it, uh, it supports a lot of features like having a freeze column, freeze draw, customized header, customized footer, and so on. We are continuously adding a lot of features to Vaden grid, and to get started with this very simple uh, markup in your HTML, you just define a Vaden grid and give it columns like this, and then from your JavaScript code, you can inject the items using a JSON object, or actually you can inject it using a data store. So giving it a function that loads the data, and you are all done. 
The result of this sample application will look like this, but with few more line of codes, you can get this enhanced application with custom, uh, enhanced grid with custom rendering, uh, custom progress bar, uh, multi-select, column uh, reordering, sorting, and so on. We also have uh, chart elements. They are based on high charts, that's why they are not free to use commercially, but you can plot pretty much any kind of data with uh, chart format. And much more. Actually, our elements, as I said earlier, are based on polymers, that's why they adopt the material design, and they work pretty much offline as, uh, as well as online. And I'm inviting you to check out this demo by my colleague Timo. It has a nice fitness tracker application that shows how you can uh, use our Vaden elements and how can you build an application with Polymer side by side by Vaden elements. Please hit your QR code on this or open this uh, uh, URL to check the demo. Uh, if not, I can also open the demo here and check it out for you. So this is a demo. The URL is demo.vaden.com slash fitness tracker. I'm going to reload it. A very simple application with a set of polymer components, uh, nice animation, list, and maybe I can navigate to uh, previous week, next week. One more important thing that it comes out of the box with responsive design. So here, for example, the list is responsive whenever you resize your browser. Those kind of boosted user experience you get out of the box when you use our elements. When you click on here, for example, you get to see our Vaden grid. So we have here a fixed column, so you can scroll over horizontally and vertically as well. And here I have the detailed column, so inside the grid you can actually have a custom render detail whenever uh, you click on an element. So I still have all the elements here, but I have here under this uh, row, I have details like the map. It's a map element as well, and the chart element. And let's take this for an uh, interesting test. So I'm going to go offline, unplug my cable here and I'm already offline on Wi-Fi, and let's reload this application and see how it looks like. So it works. Everything's still loaded, all the data is still available, and if I click here, I still can the, see the grid component, scroll over my data, and everything 100% work offline, and still our short element works and loads the data. Yeah, so a lot of features are coming up and we are continuously enhancing our elements. If you would like to have more questions about this or would like to uh, know more about how we implemented this, please visit us on booth number 20, right on the left side, once you enter from the exhibition area, right behind Oracle, you'll find us, you'll find me. If you have any questions, please come visit us. And if you have time, come and build a Vaden grid uh, based component and if you manage to get it working, you will get one of Vaden t-shirts. Thank you for listening and have a great conference.